we went through the Black Sun bushfires here and um, the co-op was one of the only places that managed to reopen a few days after the fire. We were still facing the threat of fire in some of the district and people needed fuel to get out, but also we had a lot of stock feeds and there was a lot of stock that did survive that had no feed left because everything on the ground had burnt. So we basically went for about two weeks without power, um, selling goods and just taking paper notes, people's names, numbers, what you got, okay, we'll sort it out later. So this system now means that when the power shuts down, power goes out, we're freestanding um, and we can run everything here without any issues. We've got air conditioning all the way through here now and generally with a good kitchen, a new toilet block and now a capacity to maintain ourselves 24-7 off the grid, we can provide a, a pretty significant cold or heat weather refuge. So the project that we've been looking at today is part of what we call the Cabago Energy Project. Um, there's a couple of different elements to it. There's the solar systems and the batteries that we've seen at the School of Arts Hall and at the uh, Co-op. And there's also a community energy coordinator project which is helping people understand their energy bills, helping them understand how to improve um, energy efficiency in the home. And this all came about following some community consultations that we had immediately after the bushfires where um, energy security and resilience um, was one of the themes that was identified. The Cabago and District Energy Transition uh, asked me if I could help project manage putting in e-hubs to four locations. The idea being that when the mains power fails, which it does quite often in these parts, and not only in bushfires, that you'd keep the power on, the lights on, the air conditioning on. And the people could come here and stay cool, charge their phones, get a drink, and generally have a, re a relax. It's not just supporting the community to understand their bills and things, which is very important, but to educate the community about what we can do and the need for actually building a resilient community with climate issues and the big weather events that have been happening. It's been amazing really and it has been well received. This community is, um, is not the same since the fire. It's better um, in many respects. It's brought some beautiful and wonderful things to this town and one of them is this kind of thing happening.